I want to thank everyone for coming and tuning in. My name is Eric Irwin. I'm the CMO at Wilton Brands. And before you write me off as just another suit standing up here, I want you to know that I absolutely bleed Wilton purple. <laughs> thank you. But I want to say in all sincerity as I welcome you to the 2014 Suite Up that I am very proud and feel very privileged to be part of this company. Today you're going to see the most important initiatives for 2014. And our staff, our team of people, many of you will get a chance to meet today, have been working very, very hard creating really wonderful products that make the creativity that you do in terms of cake decorating even easier. First off, I want to thank all our guests that are here. We have our contest winners uh, that entered through Facebook. We have our bloggers. And we have our own very special sweet treat team. We like to say here at Wilton that every party needs a cake. Sometimes we mix that up and say it's not a party until it's a cake. And I personally like what the great Julia Child said, which is a party without a cake is just a meeting. <laughs> so today, we have something to really celebrate. This year is Wilton's 85th anniversary. We have a really unique company that is a really special American success story. 85 years ago, Dewey McKinley Wilton was an itinerant cake decorator who went from hotels to bakeries, teaching candy making and the art of buttercream cake decorating. More recently, over the last 50 years, we've taken that same idea of the Wilton method and we've taught cake decorating at major retailers across the country. In fact, over 5 million people have learned the Wilton Method. Today, we're extending that globally. And this broadcast is being seen around the world. Our hope is that we can take the American method of cake decorating and extend it anywhere in the world. Today, we're going to share with you some of our most recent thinking in terms of how we're seeing cake design and how that time-tested, easy-to-use Wilton Method idea can be added to modern cake decorating you're going to get a chance to preview what we believe are the five key megatrends that are affecting cake design in the, in the United States. We're going to give you a sneak preview as to some of the key products that we're going to be introducing over the next uh, two weeks. Right now, we have major products that are going into all of your favorite retailers. And we ask that you, when you see them, you go out and take a look at them. If they're not at your retailer, you can buy them from us. But make sure that you, you get a chance to look at it. For the next 19 days, this is, we will be introducing every single day a new idea, a new product. So tune into Wilton.com and make sure that you're checking out what we're doing. During our broadcast, we encourage you to engage with us socially. Um, our social media control center over here is going to compile your tweets. And throughout the broadcast today, we will stop at different times. And we will take the very best questions, and we will answer them. So wherever you are, Make sure that you use the hashtag WiltonSweetUp, and we will compile the best questions that are going to be coming to us. The Wilton Suite Up has always been our key launch. We launch our products really in the, in the middle of spring. So as you get out there and see the products at major multi-unit retailers that, that are across the country, um, understand that we've been working hard to deliver these. There's three key pillars to our, our brand and around our success. One is our inspiration which is our ideas. The other is our education, how we teach people to do things. And the other is our easy to use products that make you successful. You will see this month a totally new point of view, a much more modern point of view around our content and inspiration. Our cakes are brighter. They're more simplified. They're being offered in terms of uh, environments that are much more up to date. And that content has been something that we've been working on a lot. And I, I ask you to check out our new website, our new uh, relayed website at Wilton.com to see how we're delivering much more brighter, easy to see images, and improved search functionality for our 5,000 ideas that are on Wilton.com. Also starting this month is around education. You're going to see a new launch of our course one. Course one, which is the introduction to the Wilton method of buttercream basics. We've had a chance to look at what modern cake decorating is and we've eliminated a couple of techniques that you didn't want to do and we've added some new techniques. 
So whether you've taken course one before or you've never taken it, I encourage you to get to a store and take course one. It really is, really is a fabulous experience. But we're also aware that not all of you guys can get to a store to take classes. So this year we've launched <coughs> digital education. And we have classes that are available digitally. So it, no matter where you are and what device, whatever time of day you want, we can deliver Wilton Method education directly to you. And that's through our partners at Craftsy. We ask that in either case, either to find a great class near you or to get to our digital education, you go to wilton.com, click on learn, and look for a store or, or purchase a class. It's that simple. I do believe that taking a class in a store is really the best way to learn the Wilton method. And I want to have a particular shout out to the fact that we have just certified over 2,000 Wilton teachers in the United States. Uh, <laughs> totally great. The best way to learn is to have a Wilton Method instructor right next to you guiding you through success when they can show you exactly the right icing consistency, the right pressure control, and the right bag position. It really is what has made us so successful. So if you've taken the class, take it again. If you've never taken it, please take it because you're going to find it to be a really wonderful and empowering uh, experience. Finally today, we're going to be showing you some new products. And also over the next 19 days, we're going to be introducing new products. And I want to call out one particular product that's sort of very central to a number of the key cakes that you're going to see today. 15 years ago, Wilton introduced fondant as a decorating technique here in the United States. And we created a product that allowed you to do really bright, fabulous colors, great layering, to do really wonderful tailor cake design. But to be very honest with you, there's probably nothing more, I don't know, controversial than fondant amongst the cake decorating community. You're either on team fondant or team buttercream, right? And the number one complaint has always been the structure of the fondant and how we sort of made it so that it's really easy to use, but it also how do we create a, a better mouthfeel and better taste. Well, I got to tell you, for three years we have worked on this project. And you will see in the stores starting this week the Wilton Decorator Preferred Fondant. And I got to tell you, it is the best tasting, easiest to use fondant that has ever been constructed. If you tried it once and you gave up on it, you've got to go out and try it. It is absolutely spectacular product. So when we talk about the fondant cakes that come up here today, I want you to know it's because we've been thinking about how to improve that experience and how we're going to make them taste better. As an added treat today, um, we're going to reveal the Wilton 2014 Cake of the Year. Um, for many years, 47 years, we would launch the yearbook. And the yearbook was where we really sort of put on the cover of the cake our Cake of the Year. As the needs of digital and our ability to deliver content on a regular basis to inspire you and give you good ideas, we thought it was important that we also deliver a Cake of the Year. So this audience will today get to see the cake that we think best represents a compilation of all the key trends that we see across, across the marketplace. So without further delay, I want to present to you Beth Summer. Many of you know Beth for our very, very well-received Craftsy classes, and many more of you probably know her for her terrific victory on Cupcake Wars in season six. But Beth is a classically trained pastry artist who is also our senior test kitchen manager. I think she's got one of the best jobs in the world. And I just want to thank you and turn it over to Beth. Hi, everybody. Hi. Thanks so much for coming. We're really, really happy to have you with us here today. I got to tell you, I'm more nervous right now than I was on Cupcake Wars. <laughs> But no, we're really, really happy to have you. Uh, thanks to Eric for the nice introduction. As he mentioned, if you could follow along with us on social media today and tweet us and use the Wilton Sweet Up hashtag, that'd be great. We're going to try and answer as many questions as we can today. 
So I'm here to talk to you about five what we're calling mega trends in the world of cake decorating, but not just cake decorating, also with desserts, desserts in general. As Eric said, I'm a pastry chef. I worked in bakeries decorating cakes for about five years before I got here, been here for about five years. I'm pretty darn engrossed in this topic. Um, so my first mega trend that we're going to talk about is buttercream. And that might sound like, yeah, buttercream. Of course, buttercream for cakes, right? Nothing new there. But it's actually made this huge resurgence in the past few years. But why is that? Why has it gotten so, so popular again? Well, how many of you in the room, when you were younger, had a birthday cake that looked like one of these? <laughs> yeah, pretty much everybody, right? So these are from the Wilton Yearbook of Cake Decorating 1977 and 1978. And they have lots of different piping techniques, multiple techniques on each cake. Um, the colors look a little bit dated, and obviously the photography looks like it's from the 70s, right? But my point is that most of us here in this room and in America have grown up with buttercream. If you didn't have a cake like this, you've definitely eaten a cake like this. My mom made cakes like this, and they didn't look this good. <laughs> but but everybody, everybody has had cakes like this. And it, it really is truly the American style of cake decorating. As Sandy mentioned in the video earlier that our in-house in audience saw, the Wilton method is really synonymous with that. The Wilton method is the American method of cake decorating. And you learn that method with buttercream because buttercream is functional. You can make it to the consistency that you need to make all kinds of great decorations like this. So we're going to talk about that a lot today. Now to kind of speed forward 30, 35 years, a birthday cake today would look more like this. Definitely a little bit more of a DIY thing going on, especially with the signage. There's no written inscription on it. It just says Amy, very cute. And it's still buttercream, though. That's, that's my point. It's still buttercream. But look at how achievable it looks. Even if you've never made a cake before, you could look at this and think, I can probably do that. It's got the messy icing that's very popular right now. We're going to talk about that today a lot as well. And the color scheme is very, very natural and very pretty and very muted. Not at all like the colors that we saw in the, in the two cakes on the previous slide. So buttercream will continue to be popular because it is our, it's our past, it's our, definitely our future, and it's obviously something that Americans uh, take pretty seriously and that people all over the world now want to start to know and to learn because of the style of decorating that's come out of it. So I'm going to take you through a series of cakes throughout all of these megatrends and actually desserts as well as we get a little further and just talk about some of the patterns, designs, and colors on them. So this is a, a very, very pretty buttercream cake. And I'm going to talk a lot about color today as well, as I mentioned with the last cake. Natural colors, more muted colors, are very on trend right now for a lot of reasons. People are eating a little bit more naturally these days. You might want things that look just a little bit more natural and a little fresher in general. This in particular is one of my favorite color schemes. It's done with delphinium blue icing color on the body and creamy peach on the top. Now, there's only two piping techniques on this cake, which is one of the things that makes it uh, still stay simple. It doesn't look overdone. There's a ruffle technique on the sides and on the bottom border, and a ribbon rose on the top. Both of these techniques are taught in, uh, in our course one class. This one, again, very stunning cake, but only two techniques on it. So it keeps the cake simple, but it really do it doesn't look simple. We have the pulled dot technique here in a, in a very simple ball. Both of these also course one. The colors, again, here reflect what, we've, what we're seeing and what we, what we will continue to see for coming years. The moss green and the robin's egg blue in particular here are very trendy. And we've been seeing ombre for a couple of years now. I know that that's not new. But what makes this cake that was done. The fact that the color pattern here is very soft is actually almost a contrast to the actual spiky piping. But that's actually just a leaf technique, which is one of the most easy piping techniques you can learn. It's very, very simple to achieve. And so this cake, with one technique and a different coloration, becomes very, very modern. And then there's those rosettes. So the ombre rosette cake is obviously very iconic now. Uh, we've all seen it on Pinterest, right? Um, this one's a little bit updated because it gets the ombre effect across um, kind of it doubly by using different sizes. Rosettes starting at the smallest at the center and coming all the way down and getting darker to the base of the cake. 
This is the exact same tip it was, as was the uh, tip family that was used in the last cake. Open star tip. How many of you in this room have some of these at home? Yay, <laughs> everybody. So this is just an example of something that you could do that would look completely different using the same tip. This is a zigzag technique. So we like to give people a lot of different uh, ways to use their tools as well because once you learn the technique on how to do something, if you have the right tools to do it, then your own creativity sparks your own brand new ideas, which we see a lot of from, from our blogger friends out in the audience. Now texture is super important with buttercream and becomes more and more popular all the time. If you remember back to the first slide I showed with the two really outdated cakes, the tops of the cakes, uh, tops of cakes, even when I started cake decorating about 10, 12 years ago, they definitely served as the, the service piece of the cake. You wrote your inscription there. Maybe you had a grouping of flowers there. It was really all about the top of the cake. And the sides, a lot of times, you wouldn't do anything to the sides. Now, the sides are, there's almost always something on the sides. And, the, and then you see things like this, where it's actually completely ensconced in a decoration. These are drop flowers. You have to look pretty closely to even see that it's a flower because of the way that they're arranged. And they're not you know, technically positioned to look like flowers. There's no center, for example. But again, the drop flower technique, but you can do it in ways that don't look like a floral cluster, for example. This one, to me, actually kind of looks like a 1950s pillbox hat or something. I get that kind of tweedy, thick feeling from it. And this one's very pretty and elegant. Uh, creamy peach, again. Ribbon rose, again. Um, I want to talk a little bit about the functionality that I touched on for buttercream. The reason that buttercream is so great for cake decorating is because you can make it to different thicknesses. So we talk about consistency with the Wilton method, consistency of your icing. If you use a stiff, a stiff consistency icing, you can pipe things like this beautiful ribbon rose and it will stand up perfectly straight. The, the classic iconic Wilton rose, stiff consistency icing. But if you try and do that in a medium consistency, or God forbid, a thin, it's going to fall all over on you. It's not going to do well. But if you do it with the right consistency and you know the technique, you will be successful. So we have stiff consistency roses there. We have a medium consistency bead border on the center of the cake. And then finally, the cake would be iced with a thin consistency buttercream. Using those things in those ways helps to make you successful. And that's really what the Wilton Method is all about. Now, the final reason that buttercream is a trend today is flavor. Let's never forget that we're all making desserts and they should taste great. Because it, it, if it's something looks really good, it doesn't taste great, I, in my opinion, you've, you've accomplished half of the battle. So buttercream, you can flavor it a million different ways. Obviously, it's usually at, at its base form, it's a vanilla flavor. There's classic chocolate. But you can do things as simple as put some lime zest into it and make it lime. You could put a little tequila into that and make it margarita. You could do any kind of a citrus or any kind of an extract. This one, I would think if before you cut into it, it would be a mint flavored icing. And I would probably guess that there was chocolate underneath it because of the chocolate colored Cornelli lace on the outside. So you can use your buttercream to um, portray the flavors that are inside the cake before you even cut it by playing with the color of it. If you want to think kind of even further outside the box, think about um, ethnic ingredients like rose water, things like that. This could be like, for example, a rose water raspberry cake. It's a beautiful combination. Use a little bit of fruit puree. And again, the color of that could match the flavor of the cake inside. This one's actually made with stone ground green tea. So that's something a little bit different. You could look for it in the grocery store by the name of matcha. And this is actually coloring the icing as well. So there's actually no food coloring in there. Um, to speak of. So great flavor and great color. So um, like I said, my particular favorite decorating medium, not to be a fondant hater, <laughs> is buttercream. But it's really because buttercream really tastes great. So I'm going to invite Stephanie Good up. Um, she's going to talk to you just a little bit further about buttercream icing. Hello, everyone. Wow, this room looks different when there's people in it. <laughs> well, thank you, Beth. Um, 
as she said, my name is Stephanie Good. I'm with the Educational Marketing Team, and we are all very thrilled, as I'm sure you will hear over and over again, to have you here visiting with us so that we can share some product information and some other information and then give you some great hands-on sessions um, to learn a little bit more about Wilton. As Beth told you, buttercream has been making a resurgence over the past few years in popularity, and here at Wilton, we could not be more thrilled to help introduce it to a new audience. Okay, so now I have to start my video. Oh, okay. okay, so we'll just do it without the video. <laughs> Besides all the great that Wilton provides, launch, we are introducing a new four-piece decorating tip set. I wish I had one with me. Uh, these sets of four different tips all use the same technique, but give very different and unique piped results. As an example of these sets is the drop flower. Um, it includes four different sizes and styles of drop flower tips that all use a common technique, but because they're all different styles and sizes, you'd get totally different looking flowers as an end result. Drop flowers are a classic technique, taught in course one, and are really a great way to make a lot of flowers very quickly and easily. They're actually the first flowers that we teach in course one because it's an e a simple technique, but it's very impressive and you get great results. So the student actually has a successful experience, she makes a great flower, and then we kind of trick her into moving on to some more of the more uh, harder flowers like a ribbon rose or the new zinnia that's being introduced this year in course one. The idea be behind the four piece carded tip set is simple. Give decorators a selection of tips that maybe they're not as familiar with, but that use a technique that they're very familiar with to produce a different pipe result. By putting these tips sets of tips together, we hope to inspire cake decorators to expand their use of different tips and encourage them to experiment and develop their decorating skills. The great thing about drop flowers is that they can be piped directly on cakes or cupcakes, but are a really very impressive embellishment. I know drop flowers are a go-to flower for me. Um, if I'm out of time and I need to do something very quickly and I wanna do something impressive, especially if my sisters are there, because then I get lots of wow factor and my mom tells me how cool I am. <laughs> the ribbon rose is another classic flower taught in course one. This is our multi-step flower made by piping on a base, taking a petal tip and, and piping a ribbon around it in a continuous petal. And then you were supposed to see a demonstration, so just pretend. Um, the petal tip is used, and that's part of our new ruffle tip set. The tip and technique are not being shown here, but it was a really cool demonstration. Even though it's called a petal decorating tip, it does have a wide variety of uses besides piping single petals. You can use it to pipe ribbons on ribbon roses and um, to pipe all those layers of uh, ruffles that you see on cakes today that's still a very popular cake decorating trend. All of our decorating tips are made of high quality stainless steel, making them dishwasher safe and durable so they'll last for years. And I encourage you all to look for these sets in the stores over the next few weeks. Give them a try and let us know what you think of them. One of the most exciting announcements that we have this year, and maybe I can bring this slide up. Maybe not. I don't know how to do that. <laughs> right there. <laughs> All right. Thank you for bearing with me, guys. <laughs> oh, yes. Okay. So one of the most exciting announcements, other than I got the slide up, is that uh, this year we are updating our course one, Building Buttercream Skills, which we'll be launching next month. Um, in addition to the ribbon rows and the drop flowers, course one, we've redesigned to take a lot of the classic piping techniques that we've been teaching over the past 85 years and kind of um, not change the technique, but show a lot of different ways that you can do these really classic, great techniques in fun, modern ways. 
Um, we've also added um, some new decorating techniques that we haven't taught in a while, kind of like the, Dis the Disney vault. We kind of took them out of the Wilton vault and reintroduced re them to a new audience. And we have just page after page of really great current projects that we know is going to inspire our students. So we're excited about this. We have a lot of great tips, techniques, and inspiration that are going to make up course one. And we hope that you'll all check with a retailer near you or visit wilton.com to find out where you can take a class. And we hope that you'll all join us in taking a class this year. Thank you. Just going to take a quick second to mention we are much better cake decorators, decorators than we are with uh, with computers apparently <laughs> but okay thank you Steph so that was megatrend number one buttercream now megatrend number two you're gonna see a lot of buttercream here again it is less is more decorating simplified so what do I mean by that very very simple decorations can be very very impactful black and white is obviously super impactful and this actually, there's only a single decorating technique here. I mentioned uh, the number of decorating techniques a lot in the last trend, and it's gonna continue here as well. This is a dot. Again, you learn to pipe this in course one. It pretty much doesn't get any more basic than this, but how would your friends and family look at you if you served this to them? They'd probably be pretty wowed. I think I would be wowed. If somebody, gave, if somebody other than me made it, I would be very wowed. This is another one, one single piping technique of obviously a very different look than the last cake, but very pretty and peach. This is done with a petal decorating tip, and Steph mentioned that tip um, in her presentation as what we use making a ruffle, ruffle and a ribbon rose, a ruffle rose that probably exists, and if it doesn't, we will have it in the new course one. <laughs> um, but this cake, it looks really impressive, but it's very simple to do. I'm willing to bet even if you are a novice cake decorator that you could probably pipe this entire cake decorate this entire cake in five minutes but nobody's ever going to know that right and that's a great thing i showed this slide in my last trend as well and i come back to it because i love the texture on the side of the cake again the sides of the cake being a super important thing that we're seeing in cake decorating this is the shelt piping technique a very, very classic technique that Wilton has taught since the beginning. And it's actually just updated a little bit because it's placed at diagonals and it's done in a very tight pattern so that it completely covers the sides of the cake. Think about this as being an update on basket weave. You can also decorate your cakes and treats with the food that's inside them for a lot of impact. And I really like this because it really tells people what they're going to be biting into when you cut into that cake. So this one's obviously dripping with a salted caramel and it's iced underneath with a caramel buttercream. Simple stars of buttercream piped on top and a toasted nut finishes it off. It looks like a very finished cake, something that you could definitely buy in a bakery, in a very high-end bakery, but easy enough to do it on your own. And who doesn't know the flavor combination of chocolate and graham cracker and toasty marshmallow? What is it, anybody? S'mores. <laughs> um, so with this one, the um, meringue icing, which is basically marshmallow, is just piped on with a big, large, round tip and toasted, broiled in the oven a little bit to give it that toasty look, and then topped with the ingredients that everybody knows and loves, and it becomes a very, very iconic treat. A good baking cup never hurts either, especially when you're keeping your decoration this simple. Something like that can set off your dessert. A coconut cake is just about as easy as it gets in decorating. Um, I love the way they look. I think that they look so perfect and beautiful, and this is a pretty nice photo as well. Um, but you don't even need to clean ice your cake. You, you slap some icing on the tops and the sides and then rub, rub coconut all over it, call it a day, um, and everybody's going to love it. You can just do a quick drizzle of candy melts. Uh, this is candy melts candy that you can melt in your microwave. If you really are short on time, you can do it right in a disposable decorating bag, drizzle it all over your cake and no apparent pattern at all, no skill required, and then toss that bag out with, for no cleanup. This is really nice when you have a chocolate cake inside because again, you're telling people what you're going to be getting once you cut into that pretty cake. And when it's done on a really colorful icing like that, it really pops. Here's another uh, cake with some chocolate on the sides, but we have chocolate shavings here that was all done with candy melts. Um, the technique for that's on wilton.com on how to do that, by the way. 
This cake is kind of interesting. It's our black and tan cake, and it's made with Harp and Guinness beers for a very interesting flavor profile. And you'll notice the top is not smooth iced because sometimes you just don't have time for that. And for me, this is like a cake that I want to serve my boyfriend or my dad or my friends at a rowdy party. Um, <laughs> But you know, your cake doesn't always have to be smooth iced. Sometimes there is a time and a place for it to look messy, and we are seeing a ton of that right now. Sometimes you want your whole cake to look like that. This to me is how my mom decorated. We never had a smooth iced cake. We were lucky if we got a sheet cake in a pan <laughs> in the 9 by 13 <laughs> with no decoration on it at all. But she swirled up that icing, and it made it look really luscious, and everybody likes to eat it. We call this messy icing. And yeah, it's kind of messy, but it's also pretty intentional, right? You don't just achieve this look going any which way. You do have to put a little bit of effort into it. And you can do this a lot of different ways. This one is, is more of a swirling pattern. This one is more of a horizontal, where you can tell somebody took a spatula and actually went horizontally with it to create more horizontal. How many times can I say horizontal? It's horizontal. The lines are horizontal. <laughs> And it just gives it a slightly different look. Still that messy look that, you're, that, uh, that we had in the last one, but just a little bit different. And then this one, actually, just a very simple rosette piped onto the top in a contrasting color. It actually is going to look like you took a lot of time and a lot of thought into what you wanted that cake to look like, but you could get that done very, very quickly. This one is a little bit more done up because we have gum paste flowers, right? But again, just a simple pulling technique with your spatula in kind of a diagonal motion uh, achieves that icing look that we're seeing and is so popular right now. So when you don't have a t the time or the patience or the need to smooth ice your cakes, there's lots of great ways that you can still decorate them. And this one is a really good example of kind of the shabby chic look that we're seeing a lot of where the icing is messy, but it's offset by some pretty intricate flowers. So you get a very pretty look coupled with a very uh, it's kind of just dissonant because you're, you're seeing something that's a little bit messy and very pristine at the same time. So we want to give you a little bit more information about that messy icing that we were talking about. And I'm going to bring Valerie Ferrasso up to do that. And I'm actually going to try and get her video going for her. So bear with me one second. Because it's better with the video. Okay. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Hello, everyone. I'm Valerie Ferrasso from our digital marketing team. And today I'm going to talk to you about icing consistency and how to messy ice a cake. So we have this very easy um, test to be able to type of icing is really great for three-dimensional decorations like the Wilton Rose. Uh, the, in the middle cup we have medium icing consistency and as you can see the spatula moves slightly to the edge of the cup and you want to, you want to use medium icing consistency um, when you're making two-dimensional decorations like shells and borders. In the third cup we have thin icing consistency and the spatula leans all the way to the edge of the cup. Thin icing consistency is great for icing a cake, which is what we're going to be doing. Also, um, writing and making leaves. So today we have a three-layer cake that we've torted and filled with Wilton buttercream icing. And we have thin icing consistency. And I want to talk about this turntable because it's really great. It's got a non-slip non grip on the top, so your cake won't move while you're decorating it. It also tilts, so when you're decorating the sides of the cake, it makes it really easy and you don't have to worry about your cake moving at all. So we're just applying a good amount of icing to the top of the cake, and you want to make sure that you have a lot of icing in between your spatula blade and the top of the cake so you can avoid those crumbs in your icing. So we're using thin icing on the si on, uh, to messy ice the cake today because thin icing is, is really easy to spread. It doesn't create air bubbles in your icing, and it also won't tear your cake. And we're using an 11-inch spatula on this cake, but you can really use whatever feels best in your hand for the, um, the size of the cake that you're working on. So we're just going to go back and forth in different directions on the side of the cake, creating a nice um, 
nice waves in the cake. And you can use the spatula however you'd like to create um, a different amount of texture. You can also use the back of a spoon or even a fork in a zigzag motion to create different designs on your icing. And now we're just cleaning up the turntable with, a, with the straight edge spatula. And once your cake is iced, you can even go back over it with a smaller spatula to create more texture. And the spatulas that we're using today are our new Decorator Preferred spatulas. It's a new line. They're really great. The, um, we have eight spl spatulas in the line. And they have a comfort grip handle and a uh, stainless steel flexible blade. So they feel really nice in your hand. They're easy to use. And they allow you to ice your cakes easily and with better control. So now your cake is ready for presentation. All right, two trends down, three to go. Did anybody else's mom used to do that? Call it a day? Does anybody in the room still do that? I do too sometimes. It's okay. okay, our next trend we're seeing a ton of is tall cakes. So we're going to talk a little bit about how cakes might be getting a little bit taller than you're used to. We're seeing a lot of six inch cakes getting taller and taller, so they get taller and they look a little bit more slender. Wish that would happen to me. <laughs> so here's an example of a six inch round cake. And these cakes can be achieved in a few different ways. Uh, you can have, you know, here at Wilton, cakes are traditionally two inch uh, thick uh, layers of cake and they're filled. And up until recently, most of the projects that we have are two two inch layers of cake with one layer of filling in between. And now with these tall cakes, what we're seeing is those two inch layers are getting torted a lot so that you can fill them um, so that you have four one inch layers, for example, and a little bit more filling in between. That's a single way to do it. Or maybe you have three two inch layers. There's a lot of different ways to get up and up and up. Now the caramel that's dripping down the sides of this cake it has the exact same effect as a pinstripe soup. It's going to lengthen the cake. Anytime you put vertical stripes or, or something dripping down a cake, it's going to pull a cake up and down visually. This is kind of similar. We added height to this already high cake by putting a decoration on the top that had additional height. We have this ball of blossoms on the top. And the Cornelli lace that comes up and to the left seems to be uh, visually dragged up the side of the cake by that ball of flowers. So the cake is tall itself, but there's visually things happening also that make it appear taller. This is another example of adding decorations to add height, only this time there's decorations pulling it up as well as coming down. We've applied lace appliques to the cake that come over the top edge as well as hang off of the bottom. And to do a cake like this, you have to place it on a cake stand that is smaller than the diameter of your cake board so that the decorations can fall underneath. And you would, apply, you would place those on after the cake was on your serving piece. I like that you can actually see through these two because it, it keeps the cake kind of light but also adds the height. <laughs> it's a big one. <laughs> so this cake is one of the recipes that we recently did for our Easy Layers pan set. The pan set is five little five inch pans and they're very, very shallow. It's perfectly sized for a single cake mix, uh, but we did do scratch recipes with it as well. If you do a cake mix, all you do is divide the batter evenly into those five pans and you'll get cakes that look just like this. Easy way to do a tall cake very, very quickly. Now, this is a naked cake. I hope you're not offended by the word <laughs> naked. Um, we, we tried to think of other things to call it, but it's just naked. Um, this is another example of you know, using the food that's in the cake to decorate the cake. When you can see what's inside, it just becomes really luscious and, and inviting. So you can see all the gooey chocolate ganache. The, uh, we have strawberry flavored whipped cream uh, oozing out the sides, and then the fresh berries as well. So very inviting. And actually, when I look at this, I kind of think of it as like a cake skyscraper, where the cake is floors and the filling is the windows. So this one is, is really, really, really tall. Another naked cake done in the exact same pan set, but obviously a totally different flavor profile. 
uh, when you look at this, you know you're going to get something that's tart and sweet at the same time and uh, a little bit fresher. And this one is called the kitchen sink. Um, again, this one is this pan set is great for uh, a single cake mix. And what we did here was we just mixed something different into each of the layers of cake mix. So super simple. So one layer has chocolate chips, one has toasted almonds, one has cocoa powder, one has raspberry preserves, and one has almond extract. Mm, I can't remember actually what that top one is. <laughs> it's too much stuff. Um, no, it was coconut extract. There's coconut there on the top. So. It's kind of odd because if you can manage to get a little bit of all of it onto your fork at once, which is a little bit difficult to do, it tastes really awesome together. Is anybody local and had a rainbow cone? Okay, a few people. Somehow it just works. It do, you don't expect it to, but you get it all together and it's like, oh my gosh, this, this is excellent. So, so the kitchen sink, this is really fun, a really, really fun thing to serve to your friends and family. Another naked cake, this one's a lemon br blueberry profile and we did a creme fraiche whipped cream with this one. The recipe for this is available on our Treatology website, which is treatology.wilton.com. Um, creme fraiche and the whipped cream gives it a little tanginess that actually plays up the lemon very, very nicely. And the layers of cake in this one were purposely done a little bit taller so that you wouldn't have to tort them. They would be actually like just the right height to get the tall cake without having to tort. And finally, this is my last tall cake, simple chocolate, uh, Wilton whipped icing mix, and cherries for a classic black forest. I'm going to bring Emily Taytack up. She works with me in the Wilton Test Kitchen. She's going to talk to you a little bit about how to bake out the cakes to do a naked tall cake like this for great stability. Thank you, Beth. I just wanted to remind everyone that after my little presentation, we're going to answer some videos. So if you have, or answer some questions. So if you have any questions, make sure to tweet and Facebook them, and we will try to answer them. So like Beth mentioned, tall cakes are super trendy right now. They give bakers the opportunity to play with different flavors, fillings, and decorating techniques like you just saw in the slides. Personally, for me, tall cakes really intimidated me. When I first started baking, I was terrified that I'd put all this time and effort into this beautiful tall cake, and the second I tried to move it, it would just topple over on me. But I really feel with some practice and the right tools, anyone can make a beautiful tall cake. I have two cakes. And in the same exact aluminum pan, but the only difference is these cakes were baked with bake-even strips. Bake-even strips help eliminate the three C's, crowns, cracked tops, and crusty edges, resulting in a moist level cake ready for decorating. If you'd like to learn more about bake-even strips, please visit wilton.com for an instru instructional hands-on video. But why is having a level cake important? Without a strong base, it is difficult to build any size cake, whether it's a two-layer cake or a four or five-layer cake. And you'll quickly realize the more strength and stability you have in your base, the better. At Wilton, we truly believe having the right tool for the right job. This drives us to develop products that make your baking and decorating a breeze. One of these tools shown here is the cake leveler. This is by far one of my favorite tools. I felt that I always had to use a serrated knife because that's how I was taught in pastry school. But now I feel like I'm always grabbing my leveler instead of my serrated knife. This is because the leveler helps make clean, even cuts every time. It pretty much takes the guesswork out of leveling and torting. But like I just mentioned, you can also use a serrated knife. Serrated knife is just as effective as a cake leveler, but it is a little bit more difficult. Using a serrated knife, you have to slowly turn your cake while keeping your knife level. Even the slightest angle in your wrist can, re can result in an uneven layer. So as you can see, using a serrated knife is a little messier. It, the, Layers look a little ev uneven and a little messy, and it creates a lot more crumbs. This isn't a big deal if you are covering your cake in buttercream or some kind of ooey gooey ganache like we just saw. But if your cake is naked, these might be noticeable. So if you're a novice baker or just looking to save some time, I definitely encourage trying the cake leveler. I just want to take a quick second to talk about filling your layers. 
You want something strong enough that's going to support four, five, six, however tall you want to get, layers of cake. So some good examples of this would be the Wilton buttercream found at wilton.com or the Wilton whipped icing mix like we're using here. Topping your icing with a fruit or a filling will just add additional height or flavor to your cake. For instance, just adding something as simple as drained cherries completely changes the flavor profile of this cake. Not saying that chocolate is boring, don't get me wrong, I love a good chocolate cake, but it takes this chocolate cake from chocolate to black forest. It just sounds a little more interesting. The, air, the cherries add a bright pop of red color and really bulk up the layers of icing. Simple additions can easily change the flavor story of your cake. And notice that each layer of cake is being moved and positioned with a cake leveler. Or sorry, a cake lifter, not a leveler. Using a cake lifter or a cake board to move your cake layers is a safe way to ensure your layers don't break or crack. It also gives you more control while stacking, which again is really important. And everyone knows when you're making a tall cake, you gotta go big or you gotta go home. Bakeware line, oh, I'm sorry. Now for the most important tool of all, bakeware. I kinda gave it away, sorry. For tall cakes, we suggest aluminum for a few reasons. Aluminum is lightweight and it's very durable, so it's difficult to bend, meaning it'll keep its shape for years and years to come. Aluminum helps bake cakes with strong golden brown skin, which everyone knows a strong skin is less likely to tear or crumb while icing, which means fewer crumbs on the outside of your cake. Bakeware lines like decorated preferred aluminum or performance aluminum are designed to evenly distribute heat to create a beautiful golden brown skin. And their straight 90 degree sides make icing even easier. And I know people find aluminum a little intimidating or cumbersome, but these pans will definitely give you the straight sides and beautiful corners associated with a tall cake like this one. And if you're interested in learning more about how to bake the perfect cake, log on to wilton.com and visit and take the Craftsy Baking class online. Hopefully now you're ready to go home and build a beautiful tall cake like this one. Thank you everyone. We have social media questions from Social Media Command Center. So um, Katie Basher from Twitter asks, will the new decorator preferred spatulas be available at all retail locations? Yes, they will. They'll be available at all Wilton retailers that you know and also available on wilton.com. So that's pretty, thank you for the easy question, Katie Basher. Um, and Mandela, also from Twitter, asks, if you could give one piece of advice to novice cake decorators, what would it be? I will answer from my heart. When I started to learn to cake decorate, I, 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 didn't, I, I took like a class in pastry school, but you take a class once and then you like never do it again. And then I decorated cakes for, you know, professionally for a while. And then I got to Wilton and it was like five or six years later and they were like, you're making your rows all wrong. <laughs> Um, so my suggestion, f and I was, when I look at the way I can make a rose now versus the one that I was making then, it looks a lot cleaner. Uh, if, you, if you learn to decorate cakes and you have the proper technique from the get-go, it's a lot, lot easier to uh, build off of that knowledge. If you have a good teacher who teaches you properly, um, the sky's the limit and you can go from there. It's really hard to break a bad habit. So my advice to beginning cake decorators is actually to go out and, and take course one and uh, see if you like it and, uh, and go from there. Okay, um, Lane Hart from Twitter also, got a lot of tweets here. How can I turn my stiff icing to medium? Um, that's really easy. The Wilton recipe for buttercream starts at a medium consistency. So if you make the, the recipe which is available on Wilton.com, it starts out as medium. To stiffen it, you just add additional confectioner sugar. And you would use like one to two tablespoons of confectioner sugar per cup of icing that you wanted to stiffen. So if you're making roses, maybe you only need a cup of icing. Maybe you don't want to stiffen your whole recipe. So one to two tablespoons of extra confectioner sugar per cup of icing. If you want to go down, if you want to thin your icing, you add an additional one to two teaspoons of liquid per cup again. So, and that a lot of times you want to thin a lot because maybe you're icing your whole cake with it and thin is a lot easier to ice with. So one to two uh, teaspoons of liquid, it's milk in the recipe, but you could use water or juice depending on how you're flavoring it. That would thin your icing down. So you start with the base recipe and you can bring it to whatever level you need for whatever you're making. So 
keep the social media questions coming. We're going to answer some more later on as well. All right, so we just talked about tall cakes. Now we're going to talk about small treats. So think back with me, if you will, let's reminisce, to a time 10, maybe 15 years ago, before there were cupcake shops on every corner and people left their corporate jobs to start cupcake bakeries, before you would pay $4 for a single cupcake, before there were TV shows devoted to cupcakes. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and then, you know, um, Carrie Bradshaw walks into Magnolia Bakery on Sex and the City in 2004, and all of a sudden cupcakes are everywhere. And they continue to remain everywhere. They are not going away. They're kind of here to stay. They're just an iconic American treat now. So we here at Wilton, we consider cupcakes to be the original small treat. You can do so many things with them. Obviously, you can flavor them a bajillion ways. How many people here in the room make cupcakes regularly? Yeah, almost everybody. That's pretty great. So these, you know, you can get a little fancier if you want to, but you can also just top them with a very iconic 1M that Wilton has popularized and made um, really iconic with a nice big swirl of icing. This one is done with our new buttercream stencils. There's a piece of fondant topping this cupcake and then the stencil, which is one of the new products that we'll be releasing in the next couple of weeks. Um, you just spread buttercream over the top of it and then you can paint over that stenciled um, design. This is actually painted with our gold pearl dust and uh, lemon extract. You mix equal parts together for a metallic finish. We haven't seen any metallics yet in this presentation. There's a few more coming because that is a color thing that's happening right now that is very, very popular. So this is a very easy way to make pretty elegant cupcakes pretty quickly and easily. Flowers never go out of style. Um, obviously, these are pretty botanically correct, and just another, just another example of a cupcake. Um, don't forget mini cupcakes also when we're talking about cupcakes as small treats. If you only want one to two bites, um, mini cupcakes are great. And we're going a little bit smaller with this next slide here. These are our Bitty Bourbon Turtle Brownies, and they are fantastic. Um, these were made in the mini bites shell. It's a nice pan because it has a divot in the top, so it holds filling or ice cream or whatever you're putting into it um, a little bit more than if this, for example, was just a mini cupcake turned upside down. It has a little bit of a dip in it. So this is one to two bites, max. I mean, if you're really starving or piggy, <laughs> it's one. But um, one to two bites, and these things are really trendy and popular right now because of, I, I kind of think it's because tapas got so popular you know, 10 years ago, people want to graze a little bit more. I'm a, I'm a big grazer. If I go to a party, I'd much rather have two or three small things than one big piece of cake. Um, I like to be able to sample things. And serving things that are one to two bites helps you to do that. And also, there's less guilt involved when you eat four, four or five or six. <laughs> This is another example of a smaller pan. This is uh, done in our, our mini bunt pan. We're seeing a lot of um, vegetables in desserts nowadays, and it's um, actually kind of a retro trend that's come back around. So as, has everybody here had carrot cake at some point in their life? OK. So when we were thinking about recipe ideas and what we could do that would be fun and unique and interesting, we wanted to use some vegetables. Somebody was like, well, there's carrot cake. Why couldn't we do a parsnip cake? Parsnips are white carrots, and they're a little bit spicier. So pretty uh, interesting flavor idea, and it worked out really, really nicely. We did it in this mini, mini bunt pan again so that it could be something that you would eat and be done with um, in three to four bites. This has actually got a, a brown butter glaze on it, and we candied a little bit of the parsnip and threw it on the top. So a lot of textural elements going on as well. This one is actually tall and small, which is nice. And this is actually just a sheet cake that was cut out with round cutters. This is very achievable at home. You don't even need a special bakeware to do this or anything like that. It's a little bit autumnal, so not exactly seasonal for, for where we are right now, but you could, of course, change the colors in this to match the time of year. Don't forget about bars as individual serving treats, small treats, because things that you can cut to the size that you need are fantastic, especially for parties and things like that. Things you can cut ahead like this are great. Um, whether you're having a party or you're bringing something to a friend's party, a friend's house, Think about the amount of effort it takes to cut and serve a cake when you're entertaining. It's kind of, it's hefty. Um, 
usually you're serving and everybody's eating it at the same time. And then you have to clean up. It's usually not a clean affair. But if you bring something that's um, pre-portioned, it gives your hostess the opportunity to stick a stack of plates next to it and walk away. So that's a nice thing. At least I think it's a nice thing, but maybe I'm just a bad party giver. <laughs> these are another example of something that you would make and cut. These are our red velvet brownies, and these are extremely, extremely decadent. They're made with our red velvet flavored candy melts. Um, those are limited edition, and I know there's, there are still a, a little, there are some available on Wilton.com, but it's limited edition. Um, these are the kind of things that's very similar to fudge. You just, you don't want a lot of it. Like a few bites is really usually enough. Another reason why small treats are a great, a great thing. And don't forget about cookies. These are kind of the, you know, other than cupcakes, these are the original small treat as well. And who could resist something like that? I kind of want to eat that right now. Now we're going into warmer weather. Another reason to consider smaller treats is a lot of people start to eat a little bit lighter in the warmer months. Um, so perhaps you don't want something really, really rich and decadent and large. Uh, this is another recipe we did for Treatology. So you can check out this recipe on the Treatology website. It's a grapefruit tartlet with thyme. And we thought that would be an interesting summery flavor pairing, and it's really, really delicious. It's really refreshing, and the time is very, very subtle, and a really interesting way to get some fresh, warmer weather ingredients in. We made these in a mini muffin pan, so that's a very, very typical piece of bakeware that a lot of you probably have at home. But it looks really special because we cut it out with a scalloped cutter, put the dough in, and it actually looks like a custom cup. Or maybe you do want something decadent. <laughs> so this is a, a chocolate ganache tartlet, um, a little bit larger. Again, fantastic. Sea salt, very obviously very trendy and has been trendy for the past few years. We found these awesome dried Seville oranges um, that really offset not just the color but the flavor very, very well. Um, and when I look at things like this, it reminds me of, it, it, it's more like going out to eat than it is having dessert at home. When you can make something that looks that fantastic at home, and if you have somebody over or you bring it to their house, it's like having a plate of dessert in a restaurant. I don't think if I, I don't think anybody, would, they wouldn't believe that I made that. They'd think I bought it in a bakery. Pettifors are very classic one to two biters. Um, these are covered with our candy melts. And the little tiny flowers on the top are done with our fondant cutter ejectors. Again, one of our new tools that's coming out. Very simple to make something that looks like this when you have a tool like the fondant ejector. Because all you do is you roll out a piece of fondant, you plunge, you push it out, you're done. These ones are cupped for an extra step that takes about three seconds. But a very easy way to customize for whatever event you're having. I kind of equate pedophores with being bridal showery or baby showery, very feminine ladies tea like events. Um, these are really, really fun and they look really special and that fondant ejector set helps you to do that. So Easter's right around the corner. Um, probably don't want to eat your Easter eggs as a one to two bite treat, but I included this image. I just think it's a really beautiful, stunning image and a really interesting way to do Easter eggs that's a little bit new and fresh. Again, those metallics are really hot and that metallic doesn't always necessarily mean silver or gold. It can just mean pearly, uh, pearlescent, uh, like, like these here. Does anybody make cake pops? Yeah, okay, a few people. One to two bites usually, because you can't fit a lot more on the stick than that, right? Um, these ones are actually um, done with our candy melts again, and they're sprayed with our pearl color mist. So this is actually super fast because you just spray them and you get that metallic sheen um, very, very quickly. It dries really fast. This is a new product for us as well. This is the mini treat pop container. That's a single bite in there. You push it up right into your mouth. Guarantee 85% of the people that you serve them with, they, you can't not laugh when you eat it because it's kind of funny and goofy, but really great for a party. And again, a single serving. They come with a lid so that you can, excuse me, <laughs> you can cover them uh, to store them until you're ready to serve. These are really fun. Uh, sometimes you don't have a ton of time to bake, um, so you can you know, check out what's available in your grocery store and fix it up that way. These are actually just marshmallows that we, we uh, sprayed with our blue color mist. Um, the, the daisy that's on the top of this is a flower technique that's being taught in course one. So these are very simple and become a very fun party um, technique that really the only time you're spending is on the flower there. 
And truffles, again, another decadence. Um, one to two bites is usually all you want with a truffle because they're very rich. Another treatology recipe here. These are rose water and violet truffles that we did for Valentine's Day. Roses are red, violets are blue. Um, we candied a little bit of an organic rose petal uh, to crush over the top. Very lovely, very pretty. Um, so think about all of these things when you're going to a party or having a party. Sweet tables now, super, super popular. And these are some ideas for your sweet tables. So we're going to have Katie Kanapka come up. She's going to talk to you a little bit more about sweet treats and candy melts. Thank you, Beth. Hi, everyone. My name is Katie Kanapka. I'm from the Wilton Product Development Team, and I want to show you today how you can use candy melts to help you achieve this, this uh, small treat trend. So for those good while you're working, so you don't have to make trips back to the microwave to heat it back up. It has two settings on the side there. And the pot will hold about two and a half cups of melts, and it'll melt it down in just about 10 minutes. So it takes no time at all to get started on your project. Wilton has 17 great colors in our everyday assortment that you can find at most of our retailers. But what's really cool is we've been coming out with limited edition seasonal flavored melts. You might have seen some of them out there already, maybe at Christmas time. Um, coming out this summer and spring, we have coconut flavored melts and key lime flavored melts. The smooth, creamy texture of candy melts pairs so beautifully with these two flavors. You, I promise you will love them. And then coming out for fall, you're going to see the pumpkin spice melts out again. That's my personal favorite. They were a huge hit for us last year. And so if you see them out again and you haven't tried them, you really must. And then a second flavor that's coming out for fall is um, Top Secret. But I can tell you that it rhymes with um, Farmel Tapple, and it tastes really good. <laughs> So something that is out at stores right now that you can try right away are these wire dipping tools that you're seeing here on the screen. Um, those wire dipping tools are perfect for small treats, dipping like the cake pops, those uh, petty fours that Beth showed you earlier, strawberries, marshmallows, you get the idea. And then the dipping scoop on screen right now is great for larger treats like a cookie or a brownie. Just in case you maybe didn't have enough chocolatey flavor on your brownie, you can completely enrobe a brownie in your candy melts using this tool. Now, if you're looking to do something else with candy melts besides just dipping and drizzling, you can also mold with candy melts. Wilton has a huge line of molds, and so you'll be sure to find one that matches your theme or your season. And molding is probably one of the easiest food activities you could try. If you haven't tried it yet, you really have to because it just is a snap. All you do, fill a bag of candy, fill a decorating bag like this with candy melts, pipe it into a candy mold, pop it in the fridge for 15 minutes, and they slide right out and you're done. It really is that easy. Now something else you can do with candy melts that I'm embarrassed to say I never thought of myself. I've been here for seven years and I never thought to do it until a fellow product manager showed me how. You can pipe with candy melts. Um, and the results are, it's super, super easy, almost as easy as molding. And um, the results are incredibly impressive. So as soon as I learned how to do this, I was like, okay, I need to, when's the first time I can do it for a real party? So when my friend asked me to do cupcakes for her little girl's first birthday party, I was like, yes, it's my chance to impress everybody. Um, the theme was Pink Princess, and so I used the bright pink candy melts, and I just freehand piped some crowns, and I added a couple um, sugar pearls to the top. They came out awesome. I popped on Papa pop Cupcakes, just like we're doing here, and my friend was so thrilled, and all the party guests were complimenting me, and I felt like a superstar, um, and I didn't have the heart to tell them that it only took me 10, 15 minutes to do, so I, I just kept that to myself. <laughs> um, I tried it again a couple months later, since I had such good success the first time, um, but this time I piped out number twos for my goddaughter's second birthday, and I completely drenched them in uh, rainbow nonpareils, rainbow sprinkles, before the melt set up. And it gave a really cool look, and again, um, great results. So those are some of the fun things you can do. Well, actually, let me go back and say that if you're uncomfortable with freehanding, like we're showing here on the video, um, you can also just print out a template or a letter or a number online, print it on a single, simple piece of paper, and slide it under some parchment and then just follow the lines. And you don't have to worry, if you mess up, um, you can always just throw that uh, mistake back in the melting pot and melt it back down. Um, I also wanna say about the parchment, I said the melting pot was my best friend when I'm doing candy melts, but uh, parchment is really my BFF in the kitchen always. Um, it's great for baking um, 
baking and also like you want to throw french fries on it the silicone um, ingredient in the parchment is uh, pretty much nothing will stick to it so it's pretty awesome um, so I'm going a little a little fast here I guess but um, let me tell you also that um, well you saw the melting pot the feature we added to it was we changed the bowl from metal to silicone so you saw at the end when the melts were all hard inside the silicone bowl you can just crunch that silicone and the melts fall right out makes cleanup super simple and super easy. Anyways, I hope I've given you guys some good ideas and I hope you're excited to try something new with candy melts. Thanks everyone. All right. So our last mega trend, mega trend is fondant. So Eric touched a little bit about on fondant when he opened up the presentation today. And we're really excited here at Wilton because we've come out with this new product that really did take three years of pretty extensive testing um, to get to you, and we all love it. Um, and the initial things we're hearing back from people who are using it are that they love it too. So we're, we're just really excited and really happy. Now, it might seem weird that I opened up the mega trend presentation. I just think mega trend is really funny. We opened with buttercream and we're going to end with fondant. And sometimes, like Eric said, your team buttercream or your team fondant. You shouldn't be um, because you can use them both on the exact same, you know, the same one cake can have both things. One cake can have one, one can have the other. But I'm curious if I could get a show of hands, how many of you in the audience have worked with fondant? He okay, how many of you have not? Okay, not very many, that's great. By the end of today, you're going to be believers. Um, <laughs> so for everybody who has, which is most people, how many of you were intimidated the first time that you used it? Were you a little leery? So some people. OK. I think that's understandable. Part of that comes from the fact that fondant looks so flawless on a cake. It looks seamless, smooth. It looks intimidating. But if you've played with modeling dough, and most of us have at some point in our lives, maybe not in many, many years, um, but if you've played with modeling dough, then you have a leg up on rolled fondant because the consistency is, is pretty similar. And we're really excited about this new fondant because it's got this functionality that's going to make it even easier to use. So whether you've used it before or not, we think that you're going to have really great success with it. So. I kind of think about fondant decorating a little bit differently than I think about buttercream. I think about buttercream as being blue jeans, where you can wear them with heels and a nice blouse and go out to dinner, or you can throw your sweatshirt and your gym shoes on and go to the bank and the grocery store. It's pretty versatile. Buttercream is your little black dress. If you make a, bu a f I'm sorry, fondant is your little black dress. And if you put that on, it's, it's really impressive. But it's really easy to do, and nobody's going to know that. So it makes you look like a rock star. It's sleek and it's sweet. You can form really, really precise, perfect lines with it. And at the end of the day, fondant just enables you to do things in cake decorating that you cannot do with buttercream icing. For example, this cake here, we cut out negative space in some of the colors and replaced that space with an alternating color of fondant so that the effect sits completely in the cake, in, inlaid into the cake. There's no way to do this with buttercream icing. There's just no way. I touched a little bit on that shabby chic trend that we're seeing a lot of, and this is another example of that. Fondant is really great for imprinting, and the stripes on this cake have been imprinted with the burlap roller, which is one of our new tools coming out um, in the next couple of weeks also. Burlap is a super, super hot fabric right now. Wedding is trending really shabby chic, and this is a great way to play that up. You have a tiered cake covered in fondant, so it looks very elegant and very sleek, and it's tied together with the burlap um, almost fabric-y looking ribbon rows on the center. Metallics, again, trending. If you can roll fondant into a ball, and all of you can, whether or not you believe me, you can, you can make this cake. These are painted with a variety of our gold, silver, and bronze pearl dusts. And the way that they come up the side of the cake, it actually reminds me of the effervescence of a glass of champagne, especially with the color palette that's in it. Square cakes really shine in rolled fondant. I've iced thousands of cakes. I cannot ice a square cake in buttercream without getting a one sloping corner, maybe two. But that doesn't happen with fondant. You get smooth, sleek lines, clean lines. 
you get 90 degree angles and that's part of the beauty of rolled fondant. Painting is a really, really hot trend in cake decorating right now. Again, this cake is done with our color dust. Could also be done with pearl dust if you wanted that metallic finish. And I wanna make a very strong point that you do not need to know how to paint to do things like this. I cannot paint, I can't draw. I didn't get artistic at all until I started doing cakes. But when you do abstract things like this, it doesn't matter that you can't paint on paper. The fondant becomes your canvas and it really, it really can shine. It can look very, very beautiful. This is another example of a painted cake. And again, it's very abstract. These are simply lines up and down the cake and a couple different shades of green and teal and black. And then you swirl the brush around in kind of a round motion to make the head of a flower. It's very abstract, but you, you absolutely get what it is right off the bat. And of course, you can also paint on cupcakes. We don't want to leave out our cupcake friends. They just won't go away. <laughs> um, this is actually our cupcake um, decorating set. This is coming out. It's a little embosser. Um, so if you are afraid of painting freehand, this is a great tool because you can emboss the fondant and then just actually paint inside those lines. You could actually, of course, also use this, um, the imprinter on a cake as well, but it is sized for a cupcake. I love this cake because it kind of reminds me of being on vacation or something. It reminds me of the ocean. The motion of the loops and the color pattern of the loops are very, very pretty. Um, and if you think about if those same loops had been put onto a round cake, it just, it wouldn't work the same. It works because of the shape and the sleekness of the fondant covering that square. Now, coloring fondant can be kind of a beast sometimes if you're looking to achieve really, really deep colors. Um, and I think probably everybody in the room has, who has worked with fondant can attest to that, right? Our new decorator uh, preferred fondant comes obviously in white and it comes in eight shades that are very vibrant and that do not, f they, they fade a lot, lot less than any other fondant you've ever worked with. So if you need to start with something like this, it's great to be able to start with that rather than starting with white and a whole lot of ice and color and going from there. And of course you can blend those colors together to achieve custom shades. This one's really fun. This I equate with all of my friends who've had babies in the past two years and just want to show me just how much they love their kids. <laughs> they're going to have the best one-year-old birthday party of all time. And they've never made a cake before, but they're going to do this. And I appreciate, I appreciate that they want to do that. But really, really fun color scheme, really fresh colors. Um, this would be great in a single tier as well. It doesn't have to be the double. But this is just a fondant covered cake and then some fondants cut into circles and a single, uh, it's just a dot pattern that's, that's piped on. So very, very simple, but very pretty. And I'm gonna invite Val Prada up. She's from our decorating room. And she's going to talk to you a little bit more. We wanna talk to you about our decorator preferred fondant. Hello everyone, I'm Valerie Pradhan. I'm from the decorating room here at Wilton. So as we all know, fondant is essential in the world of cake decorating from covering a cake to accents such as bows, flowers, uh, overlays, inlays, it's endless the amount of things you can do with fondant. Um, we are really excited about the new Wilton brand. In the video, whenever you're working with fondant, you want to knead it before you do whatever you're going to do with it, which is usually rolling afterwards. Our new fondant is a lot softer, so it makes this step a um, ton easier and quicker than ever before. Um, another thing is when you're rolling out your fondant or working with it in any way, it's really helpful to have your area dusted with confectioner sugar or cornstarch to prevent sticking. We have a new handy dandy tool, it's called the Dust and Store. It's an updated dusting pouch with a new design and it has enhanced features. So the fabric bag is made for dusting and it's ideal for multiple uses including working with gum paste flowers. Um, the dust and store gets its name because it's essentially a plastic container with a lid um, that stores your uh, confectioner sugar or cornstarch when you're not using it. So it makes for a lot cleaner, more functional working space. So an ongoing trend right now that's really big is textured or imprinted fondant. Um, so we're really thrilled about our new fondant pattern embossers, which help create subtle textures and achieve patterns onto your fondant. 
So the interchangeable rollers easily fit the handle, as you can see in the video. We have five patterns. There's dots, geometric, quilted, fabric, which was one of the cakes you saw earlier with the burlap look, um, and leopard, which is being used here. So they're super easy to use. Once you have your fondant rolled out, you just use medium pressure um, and to roll it across your fondant, continuing side by side until you've completed your area. The new fondant is structured to be strong and stretchy, which is really awesome and helpful for rolling out and, and also covering your cake, which is the least thrilling part about working with fondant. Everyone gets scared to cover their cake with fondant, but our new um, formula makes this process way easier. So usually it's recommended when you're uh, covering your cake with fondant to use both a fondant smoother and also your hands. If you're working with fondant that's imprinted like you see here, it's better to just stick with your hands so you don't want to ruin uh, the patterns that you made onto your fondant. So our decorated preferred fondant has this really awesome rich vanilla flavor and it's smooth and a creamy texture. And the really great thing about it is that it's, it's very versatile. It, go, it blends with any kind of flavor from like a dark chocolate cake to a citrus cake to a spice cake. Um, so that's really helpful. You don't have to worry about how it's going to um, flavor with, with your other um, taste going on in your cake. So like Beth had mentioned, of course it comes in white and we have eight additional uh, colors which are really vibrant and the good thing about the vibrant colors is they can be used on their own or you can mix them together with you know, red and yellow to make orange or you can add white if you want a softer shade. So it's really helpful. The really great thing about our fondant embossers is that they're super versatile. There's so many different things you can do with them. It can be the focal point of your cake, like you see in the video. Um, it can be used also as an accent if you want to imprint a flower or a bow. The embossed uh, patterns are great on their own, just like that. Or sometimes you want to spice it up a little and give it a little kick. So to really um, accentuate the pattern, you can add color. So a great way to do this is to dust or paint your embossed fondant. So this is leopard print that you see here, and it's hard to tell that it's leopard print right now, but you will watch as the video goes on. Once um, you start painting, the, the pattern shows, and it really pops and sticks out, and it looks, it looks awesome. Another great option, oh, so the, when you're painting, what she's using here is a mixture of either your color, color dust or pearl dust mixed with an equal portion of lemon extract. It's a perfect uh, combination to paint onto your fondant or gum paste. So, uh, another option if you don't want to paint is you can dry dust. So it's basically just taking your brush and dipping it into your color or your pearl dust and um, covering your area with the dust. So this is a great option if you want a more soft or subtle finish, if your the main focus of your cake is something other than the patterned fondant. Another helpful hint to, I'll throw in here to just give you Something that I really have um, is helpful for me when I'm working with cakes is to always have a scrap piece of fondant, whatever's left over. Use, when you, you know, finishing your covered fondant cake, you use a trimmer to remove. So you always have extra fondant left over. So a really great tip is to practice your painting or your dusting on your little piece of fondant before. There's nothing worse than your cake being done and then you go to paint and it's not what you want it to look like and you're like, oh my gosh, how am I gonna, how am I gonna make this work? So it's really helpful to practice. So another really cool thing that I want to show you guys and talk to you about is uh, a couple months ago I did a video with Craftsy and um, it's going to launch in a couple weeks. It's called Stunning Small Cakes. So the inspiration behind this class was we wanted to show people that you don't need a big multi-tiered cake to make a big impact. There's four cakes that are taught in this class and each cake is only six inches across and that's it. But with added height, which is very trendy right now, um, painting and different fondant techniques, the cakes become pretty impressive. So in the class, I'm going to teach how to make mosaic cakes. This looks really complicated, but it's, it's extremely easy. Um, it, it's using painting, mixing of different colors, um, simple cutting techniques, and applying it to, to the sides of your cake using panels, fondant panels. 
And um, also succulents. Succulents are everywhere right now. So um, this is a really cool cake that is taught in the class. This is um, a fun, uh, whimsical sort of cake. Um, I'll teach you how to make different fantasy flowers, adding gold trim to it to give it a really, um, a really pretty look. Um, metallics, big, everywhere. So I'll, another painting technique that I, I teach in the class to show you how you can work with metallics. And finally, an overlay cake um, using flowers that are painted and brush embroidered um, and dried flat, some copped, and then against the black background, it really pops. So we're really excited about this class. Um, if you want to know when it's launching, uh, you can go to Wilton.com and sign up for the newsletter, and it's going to be in a couple weeks, so we're really excited about that. So thank you. Okay, I'm just going to answer one social media question, I think, because we are running low on time. But um, we have somebody, where, where are we at here? Um, Jackie Foss on Twitter asked, are there special cupcake liners that do not allow the cake to bleed through and lose the effect of the design on them? Yeah, that's kind of something that happens with normal baking cups. Usually they grease through. Uh, it's especially bad when you use chocolate cake because chocolate's very dark, so you kind of lose everything. But there's um, baking cups that we make called color cups. They're foil cups, and they're printed on the outside with really vibrant designs. And because they're foil inside, the pattern does not change at all on the outside. So if that's something that's really important to you, you really want the design of your cupcake to stay put, check out color cups. And uh, Eric's going to come on back for our special announcement. Perfect. Yeah, that's really good stuff. You know, I'm so so proud to see those cakes and to see the presentations that were done. And I, I just got to say, these trends that we've been talking about, this, the muted colors, the metallics, the tall cakes, the simplification in terms of designs, they all seem so modern and current. I mean, don't, don't you think that these cakes are really kind of new and, and fabulous and we're really excited about them? And this year, in the tradition of what we had always sort of done in terms of our yearbook cake, we decided we're going to launch the Wilton Cake of the Year. We want to make sure that these current mega trends are all sort of being represented into one incredible uh, creation. But before we unveil the cake, okay, I'll make you wait for a second on the reveal, I want to talk about the designer of, of the cake. The designer of this cake is Valerie Parr. And Valerie is a really special cake designer. She brings a real modern aesthetic uh, to her designs and a uniqueness and really reinterpreting classic elements um, with a very, very current flair. Valerie will be featured, as we said, in this uh, two weeks in a, in a new video on our Craftsy platform. And I encourage each and every one of you to, to take this class and check it out. So without further ado, and with great pride and privilege, I'm going to unveil the Wilton 2014 Cake of the Year. Thank you. Oh, I got to push some? Oh, gosh. Thank you. So I was really excited when I heard about this opportunity um, for the cake of the year. And my immediate thought when I was brainstorming was I wanted to do something unique. Um, I wanted to stay away from traditional piping techniques and uh, typical accents like uh, flowers. Um, I also wanted to create a design that can be accomplished at any level. It doesn't seem like it, but when I go through and break down the different ways I achieved this look, you'll see that it was pretty simple and pretty much anybody, even a beginner, could, could accomplish this. So while I was researching different trends, um, one big thing that came to me was metallics. I mean, we talked about that a couple times tonight. It's everywhere. And it's, it's awesome because metallics, whether it's bronze, gold, silver, pearl, it goes with any color. It's just a really nice accent to any, any um, color palette that you're using. So also another big thing, as uh, Beth was saying, was shabby chic and al also mixing old world style with new modern techniques. So those were some things that really stuck out to me. Another big inspiration for me is mosaic tiles. I love them. I think they're timeless. Um, they're always in style. I knew I wanted to incorporate this into the cake. And the great thing to me for, about mosaics is it's very versatile. As you saw in the one slide with the Craftsy class, I, those are mosaic tiles as well, but it's a completely different look that you see here. Um, and it's simple, super easy. I just cut out squares with our new um, five-piece cutter set in two different sizes. 
And then I took royal icing and I just smeared some royal icing on there with a, a cut bag. And with a wet brush, I moved the icing around so it gave it this texture. And then I let it dry. And then once they dried, I painted them with our blue color dust and also some bronze and gold pearl dust to give it that, to give it that look. Another thing that popped into my head when brainstorming was my love for Roman architecture. Um, I studied abroad in Rome in college and I took a Roman architecture class and I really loved the design and the look that it had, especially the um, acanthus leaves that you would see on a lot of the, a lot of the buildings and the architecture. I knew I wanted to incorporate that somehow, but I wanted to give it a more modern look. Um, so I, again, I used leaves from our five-piece cutter set and uh, the way I tried to give it a more modern look was by um, cutting the edges and frilling them a little bit. And then the same color of the gold and bronze dust, I painted around there and then I attached them together. Um, they're attached on a lollipop stick on the back to add an accent. So it's something different. It's not a flower. It's not a bow. It's something unique. Um, Indian fashion is also a big inspiration for me. I love the bright, bold colors mixed with the metallics, which is also on trend. So again, with the painting that Beth was talking about, super, super easy. Simple strokes of one color, um, followed by um, pops of another. Metallic, of course, the same metallic that I use throughout the cake. So it's really, really easy to do, and you really can't mess up because it's abstract and um, to you, it might look messed up, some little smear here, but when somebody looks at that, you know, it's, it's perfect. So um, somehow I managed to take all those ideas from all over the place and put it together into a cake that made sense. I don't know how. It's trial and error. It kind of made it work. So um, yeah, I'm excited about it. So thank you. So in closing, let me extend my warmest thank you to you for joining us for Wilton's Sweet Up. Remember, over the next 19 days, to check, out, check us out at wilton.com to learn unique and fun techniques and to see how many of these key products, how they actually perform. Also, I encourage you to engage with us on Facebook, Pinterest, Twitter, Instagram. We want to connect with you and we want to, we want to be there. Also, enroll in your favorite retailer in the new Class 1. Um, that this class is so terrific, and as you saw, there were so many techniques that we were, we were talking about today that are part that are part and relevant of that class. Um, it really is the best value in terms of taking a class when you get a chance to work right with a Wilton Method instructor. But if you can't get a Wilton Method instructor, you can't get to a retailer, go to Wilton.com and enroll in one of our Craftsy classes. Anyway, it's been a great pleasure working with you guys today. I'm Eric Irwin. I want to thank you for attending our suite up. Thank you. Thank you.